back to fi sabilillah we have to do what we have to do sincerely for the sake of allah <clears throat> sincerely for the sake of allah that's number one and number two was sawab awil mutaba'a the second is that we have to fast the way we know from the prophet sallallahu fasting so i can't decide to fast one day on a thursday and then stop fasting on tuesdays because that's what i feel like it's not about what i feel or what you feel it's not based on feelings it's not based on seasonal cool stuff it's based on jurisprudence it's based on sharia ah, and it's based on guidance that came from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam so for any condition including our fasting including our fasting when we start fasting a couple of days inshallah ta'ala number one we have to purify our hearts to make sure that we're doing this for allah al-ikhlas purely for allah no other person no entity no parent no country no tv show no trend no post nothing we're doing it entirely for the sake of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay. <coughs> And number two, we have to make sure that we're also, that we fast also, and this applies to every other act of worship, every other ibadah, we do so in a way that is in line with the prophetic tradition, the way it's been uh, seen the Prophet ﷺ do. It's extremely important, extremely important, because there are debates in some corners of the world, including the Muslim world and diaspora Muslims in the West and elsewhere, People who are questioning the very basic tenets of our ibadats. People who are questioning why does it have to be five and not three or four. People who are questioning why do sisters pray in the back and not up in the front. People who are questioning why isn't there a female imam leading the prayer here. Not many, but a very vocal minority. People who's... Uh, uh, God, for the lack of a better word, is their desires. Whatever is cool today, that's what they want to go by. Whatever is cool tomorrow, that's when, what they want to go by. If something completely different is making trends a year from now, they will go with that. So it's important that as we fast and get ready to fast, we have these two things, inshallah. Number one, sincerity, al ikhlas. Number two, al mutabaa that we try our very best to do it in the way the Prophet ﷺ has done. When Ramadan starts, <coughs> how do we congratulate each other? It is a very beautiful and noble thing to wish glad tidings for the believer and the believers when something as, as, as noble as this great month of Ramadan uh, starts. The Prophet ﷺ says in a hadith that's in the musnad of al-imam ahmad قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ long hadith but the first part of it قَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَمَضَانُ شَهْرٌ مُبَارَكٌ indeed verily has come to you a month Ramadan a month that's blessed so from that you could just about say anything as long as the meaning of what you're saying isn't haram but if you were to say Ramadan Mubarak mashallah lovely that's okay. Uh, make dua, may Allah accept our dua. However you want to say it, the best obviously would be what we have heard the Prophet Sallallahu say. But we have to make sure that our uh, congratulating each other doesn't go overboard as well. I mean, I've seen people uh, 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 that do parties, right? Welcome Ramadan parties. You can welcome Ramadan. It's all well and good. But it cannot look like a birthday party. We don't do birthdays. But you can't have a party for Ramadan. That's starting tomorrow. It, and, and the, you know, the party, there's all kinds of haram stuff going on. There's music. There are people, uh, you know, hugging each other that shouldn't be touching each other. All kinds of stuff. So what are you doing? You're, you're, you're messing up your Ramadan and fasting before it even started. So how do we congratulate? We congratulate each other in the way that we know the Prophet ﷺ has done. Or in a way that is in line with anything that is not uh, of haram meaning. And we do this because imagine if you had 70 years of worship, if you had 80 years of worship, and then you went, you come and stand in front of Allah on the day of Yom Al Akhirah, and then you find out that all of your acts had gone to waste because none of them were in line with the Prophet's way. 
and none of them were in line with the way Muslims understood for 14 centuries the way it should have been. And it's extremely important, especially in a world that's self-obsessed. Everything is about the self. It's about what I feel like. It's about how I'm feeling today. It's about the vibe that I'm in today. It's about what it makes me feel. It's about what I think. It's about how I understand it to be, right? In a world that's obsessed with the self, we have to go above and beyond to make sure that we do, especially in a, an act of worship as noble as Ramadan, that we all congratulate each other in a way that does not call for uh, anything uh, that's haram. Quranic readings, and I know Sheikh Amr will speak about this tomorrow night, inshallah ta'ala. <clears throat> we further our readings of the Quran and read as much as we can, but this is what I have to say. We have to make sure that we don't set benchmarks for our Quranic readings and then become obsessed with that benchmark. Because if it becomes just a milestone, I have to reach 40 ajza tomorrow. I have to do 10 pages every day from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m right it's well and good if you want to go ahead and motivate yourself but if reading quran in this blessed month becomes all about a benchmark and reaching a milestone some sort of a, a project deliverable then you miss the whole point you're still going to get the hasanats from allah inshallah ta'ala but you know what we should do and i start with myself when we read quran in the month of ramadan we, we read it slowly we learn it, we enjoy it, we feel it, we ponder upon it, we think about it, we try to look into the uh, stories that are behind some of the verses uh, that we are reading. We do this so that we can get the rewards, number one, and anyone who reads it, inshallah ta'ala, will get it, but also we want to read it so that we will get the benefits. It will have zero benefit for you if all you're doing is trying to meet a, a, a milestone of 10 pages a day you just want to do it's a number it's a number nothing more so in this month uh, uh the, the the etiquette of reading the quran is that you do it slowly that you do it in a way that you understand in a way that you get uh, uh, and grasp the meaning of what you're reading you try to look into the stories behind them you feel it and you enjoy it and you could feel it at the depth of your soul and the seam of your heart if you take your time and and do it inshallah ta'ala in a way that's not you know milestone obsessed another key point that i think happens a lot in ramadan especially is when we make iftar our families we have to make sure that we don't waste a lot of food subhanallah it's so sad that in this blessed month when we're supposed to remember uh, the ones amongst us who don't have anything to eat and the poor and the destitute muslims waste the most amount of food in the month that they're supposed to uh, be using their least right and so iftar our families our mothers our fathers our wives our husbands our sisters and brothers whoever is making iftar let's make sure that it doesn't also become some sort of competition inshallah it's not about who made the best iftar it's not about how many dishes did you make so that it could be on snapchat and all that stuff it's not about that in fact i would say for those of us who let's say our mothers or our brothers fathers husbands wives are making of thought the, the the best way to go about this is to make sure that everything is done 20 25 30 minutes before time to break the fast so that whoever was preparing the iftar also gets a chance to make dua these are some of the best times for a person to make dua some of our mothers will continue making it and they mashallah tabarakallah they are going out of their way because they love us and they want to do what makes us happy you, uh, you it's it's you know it's very common to see people who would still be making iftar when the adhan is called right because we want to make a whole party for an entire tribe you really don't need that we need to make iftar enough for the family and when there's about 25 minutes left it would be ideal if your mother your wife your sister your father husband whoever is done with it gets ready takes a shower makes wudu and starts making dua to allah Jalla Jalaluhu. so wasting food and this type of israf is extremely common in ramadan and that defeats the purpose the opposite of it should be happening 
Another major and prominent and extremely important prophetic tradition is that we wake up for suhoor. There is there are so many blessings, there's so much in this that the Prophet وسلم, said Tasaharu fa inna fi suhuri barakah. He said, Make suhoor, for indeed there is a great deal of barakah and blessings in suhoor. If you can't wake up for a, a you know a, a full meal, that's fine. Even a sip of water would constitute a suhoor, inshallah. One cup of chai, one date, something. It's the it's 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 a big part of the prophetic tradition of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that you wake up for suhoor and that you eat whatever you can and drink whatever you can. This is truly a big part of the prophetic uh, tradition of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Intention. When Ramadan comes, and you have heard this a million times, over and again, time and again, you make an intention, as you do with your all of your other ibadats, that you're doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in your heart, and bi ta'ala, tomorrow I am going to uh, fast. This is between you and Allah. Nobody needs to hear this. This is between you and Rabbil Alameen. And Allah knows what's inside and what's outside both. So we don't have to complicate things that are simple. Another point, one of the, I believe, uh, most needed manners and etiquettes of Ramadan, for us especially, uh, Somalis, is that it would be extremely ideal if at least for this month of Ramadan, we avoid talking about controversial stuff that take away so much of our time. For example, talking about politics. I know that's what we all do. It's all well and good. But you know if you're talking about uh, state X and state Y and conference X and conference Y, you know that's going to take up five hours of your time, six hours of your time. At least for the month of Ramadan, if we can, perhaps this is a challenge for all of us, let's try to take it easy on some highly politics just for this month because talking about it will get you worked up and you say stuff that you will regret later and it takes so much of your hasanats away from you right so uh, if you want to talk about it some other times i mean i think people should always be you know in their best behaviors but we're we're human beings i make mistakes you make mistakes we all make mistakes but in this month we should go out of our way to stay away from controversial stuff and I can't think of anything more controversial for Somali people than politics and who President X is and who Prime Minister X is and what they've been up to and what they plan on doing, right? Take a break from that. You can't, there's no need to waste so much energy on things that you don't control, things that you don't, you know, you things that you can't do anything about and things that will eat into the hasanats that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was going to give you anyways. Time for iftar. It's very common in the West, very, very common, that masajids within the same city will have different iftar times. Maybe a minute earlier, a minute later. This is very common. And so it's best that you do your time of iftar with your local masjid specific to your specific location. And so if you're around here and Masjid Ibn Taymiyyah is your closest masjid, follow the calendar and the timeline of Masjid Ibn Taymiyyah. Because it's possible, I don't know, it's possible that Masjid Abu Bakr on the west side may be a minute later or a minute earlier. So what do you do? Is stay, as they say, in your lane right is specific to you is this masjid this is your locality so do iftar and let your time be for your local masjid inshallah ta'ala um, finally there are so many of us who would love to fast this ramadan who will not be able to some are sick some are traveling some are fleeing all kinds of wars some are going through troubles some are in coma so many people who would have loved to be in our place. And so we must show gratitude to Allah and thank Allah. Because we're grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for letting us reach this Ramadan and fast all 30 days in health and iman. Inshallah ta'ala, 
Allah will let us reach the next one and the next one and the next one. And so the many millions of people who fasted last Ramadan with us, who are not here with us anymore, we make dua for them. And the many who are here but are not able to fast, we also make dua for them. And we take that as a badge of honor and thank Allah Jalla Jalaluhu. Jazakumullahu khayran. Ahsan Allahu ilaykum. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our siyam, our salat and ibadat. And we must always, always pray for qubul of al-amal, insha'Allah, wal-ibadat, wal-siyam, wal-salah. And may Allah accept it from all of us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.